How's it going everybody? Josh KI6NAZ. I ask a question on the Ham Radio Crash Course Facebook group. It was a poll. What are the things you forget when you go out to work portable ham radio? And today I'm bringing you the top 10 things, which uh, some of them I selected, but a lot of them were submitted by the community and we're gonna be talking about them today. I'm actually gonna give you 11. So let's get started with number 11. This one was voted on uh, multiple people, but Connor voted on this one, a radio power cable. Number 11, most forgotten thing before people go out and go portable. And there's nothing worse than when you get out there, you've got the battery, you've got your antenna. You may even go so far as to set up the antenna. I've done something like this before. You set it up, you get it all set, and then you go to sit down, you plug the radio in, and you're like, where's my, where's my cable? That's not good. Number 10, a general class <laughs> license. Uh, this is not something you necessarily had in your pocket and it fell out. Uh, this generally means you haven't taken the test yet and, and gotten your general class license. So uh, if that's you, uh, make sure you do that before you plan your next radio outdoor adventure. Number nine is one I've definitely done before. It is a cable to connect your radio to your computer. You need that for cat control. You need that for connecting to your logger. You need that for doing digital modes, particularly over HF. That's when this mostly comes up. The okay thing about that is if you forget the cable, you can still do voice mode, you can still do single sideband, and of course you can do Morse code if you are so uh, learned in that capability. Number eight is pen and paper. Hmm. Some people prefer logging on pen and paper. I can understand that, particularly for Morse code as you're writing out each character, that can be a little bit easier. For me though, uh, I pretty much switched to logging on my phone completely or my iPad or my laptop, whatever I have in the, out in the field. And that's just a layer of redundancy. Worst case scenario, I can just break out the phone and do some logging. Now, if you're out there for like a week and you don't have a way to charge, pen and paper is obviously gonna probably be the best way to go. And it is the ultimate backup uh, of backup of backups. So yeah, I also include a little slip of paper and a space pen generally in my bag that stays with my radio. That may be something to think about adding to your kit. Number seven, uh, this is a poll with user submitted <laughs> results. We've already covered two cables. This one is just any cables. So apparently there's some other cables that I, I, I guess I didn't include. So people added cables. And uh, sure, there are a myriad cables. Coax cable, which I, I think is actually gonna come up here, but we do have a lot of wires sometimes with amateur radio. And at the end here, I'm gonna give you my tip for what I do to make sure that I'm always have everything I need. There's actually a couple of things I do. So cables, all right. All right, number seven, I have absolutely done this before, and that is for getting your guy lines or your throw bag and throw line for your antenna. Not the end of your adventure, but definitely a royal pain in the butt, because how are you gonna put your antenna up? I always recommend you leave a little bit of gear snake in your kit. I have forgotten a guy plate with my guy lines. In fact, I, I've got some of it right here. These, these uh, Dacron lines, or is this Dyneema? I think this is Dacron. Anyway, uh, I've forgotten the little spool of pre-measured cordage with the guy plate, but I had my trusty gear snake. This you get at Walmart, it's not very expensive, and I just use this, cut to length, cut a piece you want, and lash it to a picnic table, a stump, a fence post, and get that mast up in the air. That's what I would recommend. Number five is not ham radio related, but arguably the most important thing on this list, a bottle of water. Yeah, if you're doing a soda, for instance, and it's of uh, any appreciable distance and some elevation, you are absolutely gonna, you are, abso you are absolutely going to need to pack in bottled water of some kind. If you're gonna be in the high Sierras or someplace with a water source, you may be able to get around this. You can just, you know, filter some water with like a Sawyer water filter or something like that. But if you're down where I am, there's very little, if any, water sources you need to pack that uh, and be ready beforehand. Number four is one that strikes, I think, soda folks more than the Poda people or some of the lowlanders. When you get up on a, a summit, if you don't have earbuds, you often will find yourself in a situation where you just can't hear a lot of the signals coming in, sometimes because they're gonna be a little bit quieter. 
QRP radios have smaller speakers and the wind comes kicking over the summits and you can't hear. So number four is earbuds. Number three, another wire coax. That one is incredibly debilitating because there is nothing you can do. That's also like your power cable, uh, your microphone. A microphone didn't make it on here, oddly enough, but yeah, that's another one uh, that I put up there. If you don't have your coax, you're, you're, you're done. And nothing, nothing is worse than hiking to the top of a mountain, not having any coax, and then basically having to turn around. With that said, um, Man, I, it's seldom that I can turn around and not grab an HT. Uh, with that said, you can always try and activate with your HT. Just get on Simplex, 146.520 and start calling. If you can hit your local repeater or repeater where there are people, hop on that repeater, say, hey, I'm trying to activate a soda. Can you hop over to 146.520 and work a Simplex call with me? I need X number of contacts, you know, just help me out. Thanks. Uh, number two was submitted by John Henry. So good on you, man. Enough beers. <laughs> uh, that could ruin your trip or your weekend, I guess. I've never hiked beer into a soda before. Uh, that is just a lot of weight to carry. It's like water on top of water that you're already carrying. Plus, when I'm uh, borderline dehydrated after guzzling water in the hot summer sun in Southern California, the last thing I want to do is pop what's probably, at the point I reach the summit, a lukewarm beer and, and try and guzzle that down. With that said, there are some summits, particularly if you're on the early spring, springtime, early summer, where there's still snow up there, so you can just you know crack your beer up in there and, and be done with it. However, when we did the Pacifico hike, we did bring um, some harder stuff. We had uh, some liquor. In fact, Matt brought Pappy Van Winkle. Wow, was that amazing. Oh, and that, that's AE4MQ, uh, who is one of the founders of Ham Radio Adventures. Number one, you guessed it, the coax adapter, particularly the um, PL259 to BNC connector. This one is the one that you always, always, always forget. Mike, the Mike uh, K8MRD, he uh, told me an anecdote that whenever he goes into a ham radio store, he tells the proprietor uh, who works there, whenever I come in, sell me a coax adapter. And that way he always has one because you can take it any pocket in your backpack and throw an extra coax adapter in there. I have gotten to the point where I usually have two, particularly if I'm taking an antenna that requires one. Because, and this has happened to me, I got out to the summit and it was, the radio was performing very, very badly. And I, I, I had a feeling that it wasn't the radio. So just like troubleshooting anything like a car, where do you start troubleshooting at? The cheapest item and then you work your way up to the either the one that takes the longest amount of time or the one that costs the most. And the coax adapter is definitely the cheapest item in the chain from my point of view. So sure enough, it was the adapter. I swapped it out for the, the spare that I had and I was back on the air. So what is your top 11 most forgotten, left behind, left at home items when you go out for a ham radio adventure? Did your items make the list? If they didn't, post in the comments below. And hey, maybe we'll talk about doing another one. But what is my hack to make sure you never forget any of this stuff at home? A laminated card, a business card sized piece of paper that you laminate with little boxes on it. And you leave that with your radio or your backpack that you put your gear into. And make sure you don't necessarily have to call out things by name, but you do need to have boxes that say radio microphone, coax, et cetera, et cetera, coax adapter. And that way you can at least go through the mental list, looking at a piece of paper and checking it off and make sure you have everything you need. I would go so far as to argue that you should, if you have separate kits, you have a go bag or a hiking bag or a go box, in there, taped on the side of your go box, inside your bag somewhere, you have a list of items that are supposed to be in there. And you check it before you go out or you check it every time you open it up to charge the batteries or do whatever it is you do. Just so you make sure you're freshening up the kit. Because if it's a go bag, there's likely some food items, first aid items, a tank of tri-fuel gas for your little stove that you have that you've probably pilfered at some point because it was convenient to just get it out of that than to 
find the one that you know you lost somewhere in the garage, it's probably easier to just check it every time and get in the habit of it, include those things on the list as well. Well, that'll do it for me today, Josh KI6NAZ. Thanks for watching the Ham Radio Crash Course. If you enjoyed this, make sure you click the thumbs up. It tells YouTube that this is a video that should go in front of other people to remind them of things not to forget when they go out in the field. And if you did also enjoy it, click that subscribe button because I do live stream every Saturday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time and now Ham Nation every other Wednesday at 6 p.m. Pacific Time. So thanks again for watching. Please, your comments are appreciated. Post them below and I'll talk to you later. See ya. Be ready beforehand. Uh, I was on the water and uh, Mike Kate MRD just uh, just texted me and he said, just open on YouTube. God, that's what he linked me to. Good for you, man. Good for you. Good for you. <laughs> anyway, good for you, man. Good for you. I can't do Christopher Walken. Mike does a better job at it. Number one.